I'm going to be hanging out with you all at Otakon this year. <laughs> I am seriously so excited, guys. I have been hearing about Otakon for years, and I am so thrilled that I was asked to come join you all this year. So bring your Attack on Titan stuff, your My Hero Academia stuff, your Ruby stuff, Dragon Ball Super, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, Overlord. I don't know what else I'm missing, but bring it all, and I cannot wait to hang out with you in D.C. on July 26th through the 28th. It is going to be an awesome July. See y'all soon. <laughs> or robots. <laughs> but I also kind of want one. They Maybe are, a smaller one. They are definitely useful. Um, this one actually is rated to hold like really, I mean, I think I got like one of the most heaviest cameras, so it does a good job sustaining that. I forgot this table is slippery. I should remember that from last year. All right, I'm going to come over here now. I shall stay right here. I'll talk this way. All That's right, okay. what's your name? Najir, nice to meet Najir. you. Najir, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, nice to meet you thank you so too. much for coming out today. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to officially start this now. So... We're here at Otakon 2019, and I'm with a very special guest today, Elizabeth Maxwell. How's it going? Wonderful. I'm very excited to be here. I've heard a lot about Otakon, like, over many years, yeah. so I was really excited and honored when they asked me to be a guest. That's awesome. Yeah, they definitely um, action-packed with the guests this year. They, they, they truly doubled down, and Otakon, I like to credit, is, like, one of the most organized cons in mm -hmm. this area. We do have a good handful of cons here, but Otakon is, like, really one of the best. So, you're in good company. And I'm assuming you flew all the way from? Austin, Texas. Oh, Austin. I thought yeah. you were from, I don't know why I thought you were from L.A., but Austin's still a decent flight. Yeah, I well, I used to live in L.A., and I work in L.A. Yeah. all the time. So, yeah. in, in, in actuality, I did fly here from yeah. L.A. because yeah. I was working, <laughs> but yeah. I am based out of Austin, Texas. Austin, Austin. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, you are, oh, really, you're over, you're, you're credited for over 67 voice roles. I, I mean, am? The characters. Oh, wow, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, the characters range from obviously 2019. We have Fruit Baskets, mm -hmm. Oko Gios, all the way to My Hero Academia is in Midnight, um, mm -hmm. Attack on Titan is in Yurman. Uh, I was. Emir. Emir. Oh. <laughs> 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 and um, Dragon Ball Super as well, too. So mm -hmm. a nice little range of characters. And that's, uh, like I said, 67. So that's just, just probably 2% of everything like that. But. Considering all the characters that you have played, which one really resonates the most with you? Like, and which one do I think is, like, the most like me? Yeah, yeah. Like, which one, like, and when you, when you consider these roles, which one do you find a little bit of yourself in so that when, you, when you're doing the voice at the role, that you, it, 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 it comes from not only just hard work, but it also taps into maybe some passion because... It really taps into something you know that resonates good with you right well I mean I will I'll preface it by saying I try and find the commonalities between me and my characters with every character I do because it's it's how I kind of you know zero in on understanding how their brain works yeah um, but I guess in terms of one that really kind of touched me because I could really understand her, her worldview as uh, Bishamon from Noragami. Mm -hmm. um, because we're both pretty kind of like protective, maternal sort of people. Like in my group of friends, I'm often kind of like the motherly one that takes care of everybody when they're having a bad day. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we're both kind of like type A overachievers. And I know what it feels like to feel like you're trying your hardest to hold things together and then still have it crumble around you despite your best efforts and like how, how devastating that can be and, and how lonely it can feel like sometimes to feel like, well, who takes care of the ta of the caretaker, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, there was a lot of like her emotional journey that I really resonated with in that sense. I know I would you, what character would you say you're probably least like as far as the dynamics of the character? <laughs> Maybe Midnight from oh, My Hero really? Academia. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, I, I like to keep my flirtations over 18, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it all means well. It all well. So something I saw that was really interesting and 
why I thought it was interesting, and I absolutely do not think there's nothing wrong with it, but that you knew at the age of five exactly what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. At the age of five, I think I wanted to be an astronaut. And then there was at some point where I was like, well, I want to be a school bus driver. Then I wanted to be a Power Ranger at some point. And fast forward, I, I do IT, something mm -hmm. that was never in school. But at five, you mm -hmm. said you knew. And here you are, years later. How, like, what, what was it? Like, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of willpower for such a young age to just be that devoted at that time. Yeah, yeah, it's, I don't, I just, I feel like I came into this world as an actor. Like, I, I came into this world wanting to understand other people's points of view and tell stories. And I mean, even my parents joke that, like, within, you know, a couple hours of me coming out of my mom's womb, they were like, oh, she's going in the, into the entertainment industry. <laughs> like, I've just, I've always been that way. Yeah. And, and I, so I was born with blonde hair. And, you know, when I was little, it was short. And when I was five, I got it permed. <laughs> well, I should say my mom made yeah, me yeah, get yeah. it permed. <laughs> well, or maybe you did. Uh, <laughs> no, it was an awful process. I don't recommend perming to anyone. Yeah. Um, and my hairdresser, when it was all over, she told me, oh, you look like a little Marilyn Monroe. And I was like, who's that? And so she explained it to me. Yeah. And it was like a feeling of recognition mm -hmm. of like, oh, that's the, the name for what I want to do as an actor. So yeah, it's been kind of weird. I mean, I agree with you in the sense that of all my friends, I was the only one who's always known what I wanted to do and then ended up actually yeah. going you know, towards it in yeah. adult life. Yeah. Um, but you know, I also considered becoming a pig Latin interpreter. <laughs> you know, I was going to be my next question. Yeah. <laughs> any, any other strange sub careers that you were thinking about? Yeah. I mean, just kind of like little silly stuff. Like mm -hmm. I, I genuinely thought pig Latin was like a real language when I was younger <laughs> and I was really good at it. So yeah. I was like, I could be an interpreter. <laughs> um, I briefly flirted with like, well, you know, maybe when I'm not, you know, acting in a movie, I can be an astronaut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also was pretty obsessed yeah. with space yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's always been a pretty straight minded pursuit. And I, I mean, not a day goes by that I am not immensely grateful that I'm actually able to make a living doing what I love. That is awesome. I mean, when you think about actually putting the time and the heart, the effort into it, I mean, you only can do it when you're happy. So many people are miserable with their day to day. So, like, oh, which is awful. Yeah, it is. It is. But. So, beyond that, like, I also know that you are a big nerd. And I think that's very obvious. <laughs> and I think nerd questions, nerd to nerd questions, are very simple as always. So what are you into nowadays? What are you watching? What are you playing? What is, what's your, what's your sub, what's your, what's your really like relax and release time when uh, you're not actually working at the time? So my two, two biggest uh, points of nerddom have always been uh, fantasy novels. Okay. I'm huge into fantasy and my favorite leisure activity is reading. Like... When I go on vacation, I mean, I love going sightseeing. I love mm -hmm. doing activities, mm -hmm. but truly relaxing to me is just like sitting on a lounger with a, you know, fruity cocktail and a good fantasy book. Yeah, right like on. that is my happy place. Um, and then um, RPGs. Okay. Um, I've always been a gamer since I was little, but I've always been pretty mostly invested in RPGs. So it's like, you know, I played Final Fantasy growing uh -huh. up. Chrono Trigger is uh -huh. my favorite game of all time. Right, you. Um, I'm actually currently just started Persona 5, which okay. I'm really, really into. Uh -huh. um, although it's really weird to yell at myself. How's it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that weird always to hear myself in things. Yeah. But like to yell at myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, is this what it feels like? Oh, sorry to anybody I've ever yelled at in real life. It's so weird because I hate my voice when I hear it, and I always wonder, like, professional. You have a great voice. Oh, well, thank you. It's oh, very I warm mean, and rich and resonant. I don't know. It's like when I listen back, it's like, no. But, yeah, I can imagine if my voice is on, like, a video game or anything, just yelling at myself with such, like, pleasure. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what you get, stupid voice. <laughs> oh, 
unfortunate. I mean, but, but good for you. You don't have a stupid voice. Um, <laughs> wonderful voice, actually. And such a, like, again, so diverse. And I'm just looking at the characters and from the games and stuff. I was just like, wow. But beyond being a voice actor, is also, too, you've also been accredited for um, some TV and movie roles. Mm -hmm. And one that I thought was very interesting, and I really feel like I remember this episode was um, from Criminal Minds. Yeah. <laughs> that you were How's, how, how, how was that, actually? Yeah. Nerve-wracking. Really? Oh, my God, it was so scary. It was my first, like really big like TV role yeah. like like full scale you know professional production yeah. and I was so nervous um, the, so the first day like this the scene in the park I was scared out of my mind but then the second day I got to like sit in the makeup chair and have like all the like uh, you know prosthetics yeah. applied because I had um, what was it anthrax mm -hmm. so I had like boils all over me <laughs> and there's something about that that kind of like chilled me out so mm -hmm. the second day I wasn't so nervous yeah. but <laughs> yeah it was really fun though and yeah. um, I worked with uh, Matthew Gray Grubler for the most part and uh, he was very sweet very gracious and yeah he made me feel at ease as well that is awesome so moving forward and getting to my last question for the day mm -hmm. is upcoming projects. What are you dabbling? Now it's <sighs> interesting. You say you like to read. I would not be surprised if you aren't writing something or anything right now. You know, it's funny. I love writing for myself, mm -hmm. but I've never been like thus far in my life. I've never been uh, really motivated to write for others. Um, I write a lot of poetry. I have considered at some point maybe like self-publishing like a book of my like macabre limericks yeah because that's my favorite thing is, yeah. is kind of like dark macabre limericks <laughs> um but as far as um upcoming projects it's always so hard because as a voice actor almost everything we work on is like so nda like uh -huh. we can't uh -huh. like build it up beforehand uh -huh. um uh let's see is there, is there anything I can... I mean, I do have some exciting games on the horizon, okay. so, like, stay tuned on social media that, for that. That's, that's fair enough. And one thing, I can't say a lot about it, but um, if there are any Rooster Teeth fans watching, uh, the gentleman who created Nomad of Nowhere uh, branched off and started his own studio called Port by the Sea, and he is working on a new show called... Um, I'm sorry. The studio is called Portside Studios. The new show he's working is called Port by the Sea. And I can't get specific about how I'm involved okay. in it, um, <laughs> but I am going to be involved in it. Right so on. I'm really excited for that. Right on. Well, our time is up, and they're looking at me weird. So <laughs> let's make sure we get your social media stuff plugged really quick. Sure thing. So um, you can find me on Instagram at Elizabeth Maxwell. Must have been the first Elizabeth Maxwell to join. Uh, and Twitter at About Elizabeth M. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me today, and I hope you have an amazing Otacon this Thank weekend. you.